Hi everybody, I'm Paul Kraus. Uh, hey Paul. Hi Mike. <laughs> Actually, this reminded me of a ghost story, but I won't. I'll save that for another time. Uh, so I'm Paul Kraus. I've lived here in Kyoto for almost 20 years now. Um, before I came to Japan, I used to work as a newspaper photographer in a place called Grand Rapids, Michigan. That was Grand Rapids. We used to call it Bland Rapids, but hey. Um, let's see. All right, my story. Okay, um, so I worked as a newspaper photographer, and that was a pretty good job. I got to go out and see lots of different things on a daily basis. Lots of good things, lots of bad things. The very first day of my work, I learned that you should always wear your seatbelt because you can go pretty far. Anyway, that's not what my story is about. Also, wearing helmets is also a really good idea, too. Um, our news, a lot of times at this, I used to work on weekends a lot, Saturdays and Sundays. And in our newspaper, on Saturdays, they used to have a religion page. Okay, and so, and, and, and as a photographer, this gave us a chance to do a feature story, which means we got to have our pictures, more than just one picture there. So it was quite good. Now, uh, during this time, I was an alcoholic. And I was a really good alcoholic. I was on the all-star team. So working on the weekends, a lot of times working to do the Saturday, uh, the, the stories that would be in Saturday's paper the week before we do something on Sunday, which means we'd usually have to go to like a church on a Sunday morning, which would happen after a Saturday night. And if you're an alcoholic, you pretty much know what's going to happen on a Saturday night. So a lot of times I would be very hungover in the morning on these Sundays. Okay, and also there's a thing about there's a sort of a stereotype with reporters, especially like police reporters or general assignment reporters, of being sort of bitter and cynical. So I kind of had that going on. Okay, the bitter, cynical, alcoholic <laughs> photojournalist. <clears throat> not today. I'm not like that. But. Well, anyway. So as we so moving right along. So one Sunday. I had to go on a religion assignment early in the morning, and they used to, in these days, they'd write it out on a piece of paper, just be an address and a brief description of what was going on. And it, I looked at it, and it said, the Toronto Blessing. Okay. And usually a religion assignment would be at a church, but this wasn't at a church, it was at this kind of cheap motel off the interstate. Okay, in the basement. All right, so. Me and the reporter go to this place, okay? Things we do all the time. So I'm hungover, not really wanting to go to this thing. And so this, this event was in, it was in the basement of this motel, and it was not, you know, it was a room maybe about twice the size of this. And it was one of those things where it had the rooms where the, the walls kind of moved to one side, you know, to make it bigger. And it had low ceiling with fluorescent lights, and on one end was this little low stage, it had a podium and a big cross and this band that had like a bass player and an organ and something else, I don't remember what it was. There was a whole bunch of uh, folding chairs, okay? And there was maybe about 50 to 100 people in there. Now, definitely not 100 people, but more than 50. And it wasn't full, there were open seats. Okay, and so, all right, I'm standing there, got my cameras ready, we're waiting to see what happens. So now this Toronto blessing is supposed to be that the spirit enters people. I'm like, okay. Just wait, you know. I'm just standing there waiting to see what happens. So there was a stereotype also of um, a televangelist. And a televangelist is like the 80s, 90s. And so they used to say something, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. And the guy who was this minister had the whole, he had this hair thing going on. He's probably in his early 30s, but he had this, this blonde hair that was just, had a lot of product in it, shall we say. Okay, it was huge. And he got up and he, he had his, you know, sort of fire and brimstone thing that he's doing at the beginning of the, his sermon at the beginning of the service. And, uh, okay, and so we're listening to that, you know. Again, I'm standing in the corner, not 
not too interested in what's going on. Then the music starts up, and people stand up, and they're clapping and dancing to the music. It's like, all right. Well, again, I'm standing by the corner, bitter, cynical, and hungover. And then suddenly, some people start doing this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm awake now. The spirit is starting to enter some of these people's bodies, supposedly. So again, when people are starting to... They're shaking. They're shaking like this. Two or three people would come up to them, these sort of lay ministers, and a couple would be behind them, and there'd be a guy in the front, you know, kind of putting his hands in front of all the chakras or whatever. And these people would convulse, and then they would be gently brought down to the floor. And I'm like, well, this is at least interesting. I've never seen this before. It's not just some boring sermon. I get to see shaking. <laughs> now, my first initial analysis when I watched this was that it's sort of like a, you know, people go to these things knowing that this is going to happen, and so they believe that it's going to happen, and so they make it happen. That was what I first thought when I watched this. And I actually still think with some of the people, um, this is what happened. They, be they truly believe that the Spirit would enter their body, and they've seen this before, and so they get there, and they think it's going to happen, and they start doing what they believe is going to happen. Okay? But, some people, there's something a little bit more to it. Okay, because sometimes, so I'm taking pictures, this is actually getting quite interesting, all right? I've never really seen anything like this before. <clears throat> so as a photographer, a lot of times I, you know, have a long lens, don't get too close, you know, I have a telephoto, take the pictures, and other times you have a wide-angle lens and you get in close, so you can get the context. As I got in close to some people, their vibe was like shaking. I could feel it from the people. And I go, wow, this is pretty weird. Right? And as I got near one person in particular, where did my picture go? This gentleman, who I took a picture of, who has the spirit entering his body, and he's shaking. Suddenly, I felt in my body, <laughs> what's going on here? And I quickly... I'm like, no, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. Okay, for two reasons. One, I'm a photographer, and having shaky hands is really bad for pictures. And the second thing, all I can imagine was the other reporter calling my boss on the phone on a Sunday morning going, oh, wait, man, I don't know what to do. He's laying on the ground. A spirit took his body. He drove. How am I supposed to get back to the office? So needless to say, I, I pushed this feeling away, and then took more pictures, and we finished the assignment, went back to the newsroom. I talked to the reporter about this a bit, and he's like, uh, yeah, Krauss, uh-huh, uh-huh. He didn't, he didn't buy it. But for me, this was quite an interesting experience. Um, how do I say this? Life isn't rational, it's magical. Rationality is, as a human construct, we use rationality as a way to describe the universe. There's many ways of describing the universe. Yes, of course, there are, you know, there's laws of nature and stuff, but there's always, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes on in the world that we just really can't describe using the rational model, okay? And I was quite, my eyes were quite opened by this experience because it wasn't something I could explain you know, like it's something I learned in science class in university, okay? And I also realized a lot with myself about um, my prejudices I had walking into the situation. You know, I prejudiced against evangelical Christians, and I was very narrow-minded about it, and I also had, you know, my own personal beliefs that were quite shaken by this experience. And as I've learned through my life, there's also a whole bu bunch of other stuff that I've experienced that isn't you can't just kind of fit into the box of rationality. Anyway, so, sing praise, hallelujah. All right, thank you very much. That's my, that's my WTF story, so thank you.